All right, so moving on to our last topic, we're going to talk about what do you do when you get an injury? So, you know, we've been talking about one rep maxing, RP, maybe you've just been going hardcore, maybe we did a little too much and we're just kind of feeling some aches and pains where we have an injury or something, you know, that really worries you happen. So the question is, how do I deal with it? You know, the first things first is you have to judge the severity, right? So you got to be honest with yourself, right? Obviously, if there's like a bone sticking out, you're like, ah, go to the ER. That's like one of those no brainers things. But the rest, you know, the rest of the most injuries, um, you kind of just kind of have to evaluate and say, Hey, is this something that's like, ah, oh, yeah, oh, it's a little naggy and that doesn't feel good afterwards. And I don't like it. Or like, oh, I tweaked it a little bit and like, it's okay, but it's not devastating. You know, you kind of have to gauge it out. If you're worried, you're ever in the point where you're like, this is the worst pain of my life. Anytime you're the worst pain in your life, it's probably worth getting checked out or talking to someone. I'll just be like to cover, you know, cover my bases. there, saying if you're having like the worst pain in your life, probably should do that. But if you're having like aches and pains or you felt like a little tweak, you know, most of these things can be self-managed really effectively. And that's what I want to try to encourage you to do. You know, the old adage used to be rice, right? So rest, ice, compression, elevate. That was the answer for like everything. You go to your doctor, it's like ibuprofen, rice, that's it. And then you just do that for how long until it's better and then don't do what you're doing. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it, it was meant to be, you know, good advice and be helpful, but I think we've kind of moved on past that and learned like the, there's probably better ways to do that. So, you know, a new acronym now that I've seen in the British Journal of Sports Medicine talks about it, it's called peace and love. And so peace and love instead of rice, um, and, you know, not as easy. Obviously there's a lot more letters in peace and love than there are rice, but I think it's a really nice acronym. And I'll kind of run through the, what the acronym stands for, you know, first things first, P is for protection. So obviously if you just hurt something like, Oh, like I hurt my back deadlifting or squatting or who knows doing whatever, like, protection doesn't mean like you need to be in a cast and you need to be rigid. It's just like, okay, let's, let's protect that area and let's not do that, you know, thing that's going to hurt it a lot anymore. So, oh yeah, like I, you know, my shoulder really hurts anytime I go like this, like, okay, like let's not do that repetitively with lots of weight in, in for the next couple of days. Like that's, that's all I mean by protection. That don't mean you have to get a boot. You know, sometimes in life that happens, you're super flared up. I have to put you in a splint or, you know, I put you in a cast or whatnot. We, we do that at times, but for most people, protection just means kind of taking easy, you know, rest for a couple of days and, and rest doesn't mean complete rest. We'll talk more about that but it just means like hey don't keep doing what you're doing if it really hurt when you're doing that thing like let's back off a little bit like you're gonna be okay you're gonna be fine like you'll make plenty of gains like we're playing the long game here right so i'm not living for today or tomorrow i'm living for 30 years down the line so you know, i said protection is just kind of meaning hey be smart about things next we have elevation you know that was part of our rice acronym elevation data is kind of like mixed on this. It's not great. The theory though, is that kind of, we're helping things drain Well, you know, when we have inflammation, it goes to where we have that injury. Let's say, you know, when you sprain your ankle, that's just like the most classic example. It just puffs up and swollen. When you elevate it, it kind of helps, you know, inflammation get out of there, kind of helps blood circulate a little bit and just like, and move around a little bit. But like I said, evidence isn't great, but it can be helpful. And usually it, it does feel good for people. So we, it's not a harmful thing to be doing. Um, for the A in peace, that's actually avoiding anti-inflammatories. Like we talked about before, you go to the doctor a lot of times, they're like, hey, here's my ibuprofen, stop doing what you're doing. But actually, we want to avoid you know, anti-inflammatories. At the end of the day, your body uses inflammation to help heal things. And so if we're doing anti-inflammatory in that setting, then we're kind of preventing the healing from happening too. So, you know, it can be nice for pain relief in terms of, you know, when you take like an ibuprofen, but you know, if you really, really need pain relief, Tylenol, you can use that or acetaminophen that doesn't have necessarily the strong anti-inflammatory properties. Um, but typically we don't want to just give you lots of, lots of NSAIDs and say, Hey, take these, you know, it'd be fine for the pain, but actually it's inhibiting our, you know, inf natural inflammation, which is our, what our body's using to regenerate things and to heal things. So we want to avoid those if possible, um, to kind of, to kind of help your body just augment its natural healing. And the C in peace is compression. Like we talked about with rice, compression can be helpful. Some people really feel like it, it does a lot for them. Once again, ankle sprain, a lot of times people feel better with that. It's more subjective. The idea behind it is you're maybe, you know, like I said, getting, uh, keeping stasis away, meaning we're not having just tons of fluid sitting there. It's kind of, you know, moving it back in other places, but, um, not super strong. I think there's some, you know, cool technologies now with like progressive compression in terms of like things will compress and then relax to kind of help move things through. Um, that can be helpful too, but that is something like I said, pretty much harmless. And so it's, it's okay to do if you want to. And then for the E in peace is education, right? And that's what we're doing here. You're, if you're listening to this, like you're getting that educational component right now, but most people, like I said, when they get an injury, they're just like, oh, they're frozen in fear, right? They don't want to do anything. Everything hurts. They can't do anything. They're so terrified. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Am I ever going to work out again? All these questions they ask, you know, big things is take a breath. Like the vast majority of things get better on their own over time. If we did absolutely nothing, they'd get better. That being said, we're 
smart, lifelong athletes. We know that if we have an injury, we got to slowly work back and then gradually build ourselves back up to that. But you know, most people don't know that. So for education wise, it's important to say, Hey, like, I know I had this injury. I want to kind of, you know, protect it for a little bit and be sensitive about it, but I want to be smart. And I want to keep moving. Right. I want to make sure that I'm not just sitting in bed all day. Cause you know, that's like the pretty much the worst thing you can do for an injury is just sit all day, every day. And just understanding that, Hey, this is going to get better. Understand the time course. Sometimes these things take weeks. Sometimes they take months, but having that understanding can be really, really under, uh, helpful you know, in terms of you understanding your prognosis and how long it's going to take. And so, like I said, having some sort of education, whether that's, you know, you need to talk to a doctor, you need to talk to a physical therapist, whatever you need to do, you know, or if you just, you know, you know, seek stuff out yourself, just be educated that, Hey, like injuries happen, your body is resilient and strong. It will get better. We just need to kind of help nudge it along that way. And it will take care of itself. An additional component of education is that, you know, it's not probably worth it to do lots of passive modalities. So what we made of this is it doesn't necessarily pay to go get massages or chiropractic care or dry kneeling or injections or whatever you want, whatever passive thing, it's usually not necessary. You know, obviously someone who can do injections, I do them quite frequently, but you know, you don't have to run to someone right away after you get injured and say, Hey, I need an injection or Hey, I need manipulation or Hey, I need this, I need X, Y, and Z. And so it actually encourage against that, you know, that's passive. Passive means like someone else is doing it to, to you, right? Whereas active is like you are in control. And so I will always be an advocate that, Hey, I want you to do active therapy. That's, you know, you exercising, you doing rehab stuff. Obviously there are times you can do passive. I'm not saying all passive things are wrong. It's okay. If you want to, you know, try some passive modalities in addition to active, I'm okay with that, but we always have to be moving in the direction of active therapy, right? So we're doing things for ourselves. We're doing things on our own. We are teaching our body. Hey, I can do this. I can move through this. It's not the end of the world. If I use this, I'm not going to fall over and die if I use this. So it's kind of teaching yourself that. Cause if you do passive stuff just over and over, you're becoming dependent on that thing. You're saying, Hey, this thing makes me feel better. And this person does it for me. And it's like, I need that to get me better. Well, first of all, it's going to be expensive. I mean, that's going to be a lot of visits to someone. And second of all, it's not setting you up for success. So I want to set you up for success and say, Hey, we want to try to limit the passive modalities and really active, you know, focus on the active modalities. Okay. And so that was kind of peace. That's like our initial, you know, our initial thing where, Hey, first couple day or two saying, Hey, this is what we're doing on. Keep the education, understanding we're doing some elevation, maybe some compression and understanding there. Um, and then things are starting to cool down a little bit. Now we can kind of work into the love, right? And so the L for love is load. So we can start loading things back up. You know, obviously if you don't know how to do this, or you're like afraid to do this, please talk with a physical therapist, um, or get someone to help guide you through this process, you know, cause we want to make sure we're doing it progressively in a progressive overload fashion so that we're building up our tolerance to get you back to where we want to be. But we definitely don't want you to just be like, okay, load, uh, I'm going to go back to exactly what I was doing at the same time. That's probably not a great idea. So load means, Hey, it's okay to start loading this back, back up. It's going to take time. You know, I would say, let pain be your guide. Essentially, if you're going back out there and it's like <laughs> 10 out of 10 pain, okay, don't do that. Let's back it up. But if you're going out there and it's like a one or two and, and that's, a, I'm okay with a little bit of pain. Things are going to have some discomfort, but I want us to slowly start progressing back out there. Okay. The O in love is optimism. They've actually found in lots and lots of studies that having an optimistic attitude will help with recovery time. You know, people who have poor outlooks or depression tend to have prolonged recoveries. And so have an optimistic attitude can actually be very helpful for your progress. And so it's kind of interesting. I know it's like, you know, like Everyone wants to be optimistic, but, oh, I can't be optimistic, Jordan. I'm in this situation. I get it. If you're an athlete and you're hurt, you don't want to be there. But just, you know, understand, hey, the more positive I am, the better this process is probably going to go. The V in love is vascularization. So it's kind of a kind of a stretch using the V there, but essentially what they're saying is it's a good idea to start doing some cardiovascular training, get that blood pumping, get things moving. Um, you know, if when in doubt, if you can't do a whole lot of strength stuff and cardiovascular training feels okay, that's great. Let's do that. Let's focus on the big thing is doing some sort of movement. We just tend to find that people who have, you know, a better aerobic base tend to recover better, better, tend to have better outcomes. And so, you know, getting stuff moving is really important. And once again, the E in the love is exercise. So once again, mobility work, if you need to, if that feels good for you, strength, cardiovascular, wherever, like whatever level you're at is fine. Like let's say all you can do is just kind of some gentle range of motion stuff. Okay. We start there. And then when you say, okay, I can get the range of motion. I can do unloaded, you know, cardiovascular stuff. That's cool. Feeling good. Okay. Now I can start loading to some strength up. That's great from there. So it's just really progressing kind of understanding. Like if you step back though, like this whole piece in love is kind of cool. The big thing that what I want you to take away from this is like, I don't want you to be like, Oh, I'm hurt. I'm doing nothing. You know, I want you to do something, you know, and I talk about a couple days of rest, but really it's like, that's just to give you a framework to like not jump back into things. But like, really, I mean, if you get injured, you know, you can as early as that, you know, the next day or whatever, you can slowly start doing stuff. If you're feeling okay. I mean, typically if I get hurt, I'll try to the next day to even do just some gentle range of motion stuff, do whatever, just kind of 
get things moving. Like I said, the earlier we get you moving, the better outcomes you're gonna have. And I want you to do active modalities, right? Not passive modalities. Active modalities kind of help, you know, let your body know, hey, I can do this. I can do this movement without pain. I can survive, you know, I'm gonna be okay, I'm resilient. And so we'll get you back there. But like I said, just kind of understand that framework where like if I'm hurt, you know, we're going to just kind of calm things down and slowly build back up. Those are essentially the two things we're doing is calming it down and then building things back up. That's all it takes. It's actually relatively simple. But once again, if you're stalling out on these, I would be remiss if I didn't say, Hey, please talk to your doctor, talk to a sports doctor, talk to a physiotherapist, talk to, you know, someone who can help guide you back here if you're not progressing the way you want. Um, but it's super important to, to kind of make sure that we're heading in the right direction. And if you need that, you can get someone with professional help.